to find out if Yuri has an answer to this Colossal and get into the game. I think this is something that can force so much pressure from the leads. Uh, I'd be interested to see how Santino plays it early on and how he wants to go around it. I've talked a lot uh, kind of off screen with you guys about how do you deal with a Colossal? You need a ground type. Um, there's the Mole Breaker confirmation on Extra Drill. And that's going to be a Pokemon that can, of course, really help out against this Colossal. So uh, a number of options for him there. Obviously, Rotom Extra Drill pairs up pretty nicely uh, against the two of them, I think. So uh, a really kind of good start from, from Yuri and respecting uh, what Santino has been doing throughout this tournament, understanding the way his team plays, what he might do. And I, I think leading quite well into it. That said, Santino knows his way around this team, and he knows how to mm -hmm. maneuver out of these tricky situations. Of course, and Santino leading out the Colossal and Dragapult, a great pairing there. And Dragapult being most of the fastest thing on the field there, and being able to go for something like the Surf, activate that weakness policy and this um, team engine boost, and then being able to deal some damage to that Excadrill really does put Santino in a fantastic position, although Alessio has been able to put himself in a position where he's got two Pokemon that can deal excellent damage to that Colossal, he has to be able to pick up those KOs, otherwise Colossal is going to be super speedy and start running through his team. And I think going for the Dynamax here on the Excadrill is a really great way to start. Rotom might be the target of that Colossal, so making sure the Excadrill is staying as healthy as possible. We'll be able to take any potential Surf damage coming out from that Dragapult. Um, and be in a position to fire off something really powerful like a Max Quake in retaliation could be really optimal for Alessio. But no surprises here from Santino going for that Gigantamax Colossal. Um, again, one of these Pokemon that once it came into the fray was used everywhere. This is a really um, solid strategy that you can run with it. Interestingly enough, um, Yuri going to be going for the Max Guard on that Excadrill as the Dragapult does indeed go for the Surf. So this will connect on the other two Pokemon on the field. Colossal is going to take a decent chunk of damage there. Rotom, of course, really not going to worry too much about that. But what it will fear is the Colossal Steam Engine going off and the Weakness Policy Boost. There are so many boosts on this Colossal right now, Adam. I know you must be excited. This Colossal is ready to go, and if his targeting is correct here, uh, things could be going very well. There is the confirmation of Max Overgrowth on the Colossal. Uh, it does land into the Rotom and unsurprisingly picks up a knockout after <laughs> all of those boosts. Colossal on the field, looking a bit like Mount Doom, so scary to opponents from the other side of the field. And that's exactly how this team has to be played. Santino needs to make sure he calls protects and Max guards correctly, picks up knockouts when and where he can, and that's one of the best ways to do it, is call the protect on Excadrill and just go after the Rotom. Of course, Amoongus does take the field. Uh, that's going to be something that can kind of buy Yuri a bit of time, but one of his Dynamax turns on the Excadrill, he's going to be forced into, you know, being safe and, and max guarding. And really, uh, trying to push on, I think, is going to be important for Santino. He needs his next two turns, I think, to be two knockouts for this game to get off to the perfect start for him. And, and calling that protect, I, I can't undervalue just how good that was. Oh, 100%. Picking up the solid KO there against a Pokemon that can apply a lot of pressure is phenomenal from Santino, and it kind of punishes the safer play there by Yuri. But another little tricksy move. This is Dragapult going to go for that ally switch and switch places with the Colossal. Amogus going to go for the range powder and be able to redirect the moves from that Gigantamax Colossal protecting the Excadrill. But this is the thing with Colossal. Due to its typing, it can also hit really, really strong fire type moves. The explosion goes off there straight into the Amoongus. And once again, Santino picks up another really, really solid KO here. There is still time for that Excadrill to be able to fire off a big move damage into the opposing Colossal. And here we go with the Max Quake, you know, really casting that towards the fire. But actually, it's going straight into the Dragapult here. So Dragapult, thanks to the ally switch, able to take that targeting. And really, Santino is in so much control right now. He's in the driving seat and calling every single turn exactly how he wants to. That's very cheeky. Is Not only did you get everything set up first turn, then you make a mess of things with the ally switch. That's so good from, from Santino. And, and it is tough. We talked about it a little bit earlier that these are open team sheet tournaments and you do have to think about these things. You know, they know of the ally switch on the Dragapult. And I think a lot of people who have played against Colossal teams know about it. And it's a horrible mind game to play against. I do not wish it on anyone at all where you have to call where it's going. It's it's absolutely nightmarish to go against. Uh, I really like this addition of GMAT's Volcalith, uh, even into the Protect doing huge damage and, and just setting up for a kind of easy end game, I think, with that residual damage coming down. So uh, just a really good first few turns and a, a really quick looking game from Santino here. The Colossal is just completely in control. Breaking Swipe gonna go around 
um, and connect onto that Excadrill, lowering its attacks. Excadrill really looking to be in such a precarious position here. Gonna follow up with that Max Quake, gonna reset the special defense, but I really think it needs more defense boost than just these two. Colossal able to tank that and still survive. And I think something to touch on what you said, Adam, having that residual damage as well from the rocks, from the Volcalith is gonna be so pivotal here. It's just gonna be able to keep whittling away at Yuri's last two Pokemon, and as you can see, they are both so dwindled in their HP. You know, Excadrill going to be starting to be attacked by that Colossal. The Togekiss really not being able to survive through the Protect um, of that as well. So even though Protected, Togekiss is now below 50%. And I think that's key for this Colossal. It's able to hit all of the Pokemon that Yuri has brought for super effective damage. This this Togekiss is uh, kind of in trouble as well. Like We just saw how much the, the Volcalith Rocks did between turns, and that is... That's a problem. I mean, extra didn't take as much because it was still in its Dynamax form, but now it's going to start adding up there as well. I mean, even though it's not Gigantamax uh, anymore, like, the Colossal is still actually huge and is still a huge threat. So all it needs to do is rem remember it has the Steam Engine boost from turn one, just set that up, and then Heat Wave for the win. So uh, really quick game. I mean, that game was over in four turns. We had uh, the three turns of the Dynamax, and then we had the, the fourth turn with the Heat Wave, which is kind of what you want when, when it's done you want to get back to your spread moves and and deal that damage and yeah that's a that's a flawless execution of the team from Santino I mean you said that you wanted to see Colossal and that's really all the action that we got from that game one and I think it was very interesting as well you know we see a lot of times in these games there's a lot of defensive plays a lot of switching and you know the games do kind of take their time um but actually with this game we saw the Dynamax go away in turn one and Dynamax was over one it, it was over in about four turns that, that's just an insanely offensive play by coming out from Santino he kept his two same Pokemon on the field the whole time just really really phenomenal and if you're Yuri you have to really think how do you counter this Colossal because as far as I can see particularly from the leads he led in game one he couldn't do anything to stop Surf connecting and getting Colossal all set up well he didn't really have much time to think about what he wants to do in game two so we're gonna just jump right on into it and see where the answer is i'm not even sure that yuri did anything wrong here i think his the predictions from santino were just so good and so perfect every single turn that that's why he won the game i mean ally switch in open team sheet is a nightmare you know it's there you have to be so respectful of it and if you call it wrong you just put yourself in such a bad position as we saw when the max quake hit the Dragapult. It's it's an audacious thing to bring to a tournament like this, but when you get to execute it so well, and the mind game in this one, where you know that he did a turn two ally switch, you've got to sit down and think, okay, well, is he going to do it again? And if you call it wrong, you're going to be in a whole lot of trouble. So uh, a lot going on there. Uh, I really like this kind of mixed up Dragapult set. We ob obviously see them uh, running a lot of offense usually, uh, and that's pretty cool, but this one just does everything that he needs to and uh yeah santino's gonna be in a position once again to, to try and make those plays if he can read the adaptations that yuri makes this time then he'll just be in the same position as he was last game and yuri has to really i think spring a surprise on santino here i mean that's the thing ally switch is the complete 50 50 of pokemon and knowing that it's there just built anticipation and mind games even more Yuri gonna go on the offensive here with that Rotom this time going to Dynamax it up as Santino does the same on his side of the field. Um, it's one of these things again, you know, Yuri, like you said, I don't think he did anything wrong in game one. He's gone with the same needs in game two, but I think he needs to go more on the offensive pressure. You know, Santino was able to really punish that max guard from the Excadrill in turn one of game one. So now that we're here in game two, Alessio really does have to start changing things up. Colossal is going to go for the Gigantamax up here as Dragapult. To no one's surprise, does go for that Surf once again, dealing a little bit of damage to Rotom and Colossal and a little bit to that Excadrill as well. But Colossal, very happy to be hit with the Surf. Going to be maximizing up its speed and activating its weakness policy once again, being such a commanding threat here on the field. The Excadrill, however, has something to say about that too. It's got a weakness policy all of its very own. So that's something that Santino does have to be aware of. Going for that max overgrowth once again, targeting down into the Rotom. Now that it is Dynamax, it is able to take that, but only just right down into the red health status there. So Rotom gonna be looking a little bit precarious to try and get through its turns, but if it can fire off a max geyser um, into that Colossal, then that's gonna be trouble for Santino. A Max Geyser would be a huge swing of momentum here. Of course, Excadrill also uh, has high horsepower, misses the high horsepower. Uh, that obviously has to use that because it can't Earthquake next to something like the uh, 
the Rotom with Mold Breaker. Uh, but it doesn't matter. The Max Geyser gets it. Everything's fine here. Uh, Max Geyser does connect and, and deal with that Colossal. So things certainly looking a little bit different in this game as, as Colossal taken out on the first turn. Yeah, Rotom able to cover its buddy Excadrill there, you know, missing the high horsepower, unfortunate, but Rotom's able to save the day and go for that Max Geyser and also set up the rain um, so that any future Max Geysers will be dealing more damage. But at the same time, that can work a little bit in reverse for that Dragapult. We know that Dragapult's kind of a mixed set, but something like Surf and the Rain still is something that Excadrill doesn't want to be taking. Oh, not at all. I mean, Surf in the Rain is, is going to hurt. And we saw how much it did. Yes, it activated the weakness policy, and that was pretty good for him. Uh, but not quite what you want. Uh, I do think that having the Rillaboom in the back means Santino could pull some momentum back in his favor pretty quickly uh, if he's able to. He does opt uh, to go a little bit differently for him there. Uh, you know, we get to look at those choices. That's pretty cool for us. Uh, but yeah, I, I think Urshifu is just as good here and, and maybe saving the Rillaboom um, for a little bit later. As I say that, Rillaboom's coming. So uh, typ typical <laughs> yeah. of me, really. Yeah, I think you're carrying over the, not so much the curse, but just the, the prophecies, Adam, with you um, into today's broadcast as well, as Rillaboom does join the field um, across the train, obviously, in effect, as Urshifu goes for the surging strikes. So going to go straight out and connect into that Excadrill. It's not going to appreciate that at all. Of course, critical hits guaranteed on all three of these, but it only takes two to be able to KO the Excadrill. And Yuri has lost one of his Pokemon, will be forced to bring another one into that slot, and maybe one that can apply a little bit more pressure to these two offensive powerhouses on Santino's side. Max Lightning gonna come out from the Rotom, and I really, really like this play. Not only do you take the Urshifu down to its Focus Sash, but you also are in a position where you can change that terrain, meaning that the Grassy Glide um, potential from the Rillaboom will no longer have priority. Not having access to Grassy Glide makes this Rillaboom a, a lot worse I, I hate to say it but it, it's lacking one of its key features now right it's not able to to play that smoothly and it's also now against the togekiss so uh yuri has, has managed to get so much value out of this dynamax rotom it's something that i know people have experimented with and and watching him get like the full use out of it is so essential there i really like this play um i think that as you mentioned that the max lightning is being able to control the train so good it's now going to force switches from Santino, and you have to wonder, does Yuri, you know, read that and just start punishing him for those switches? Is he able to, to say, well, I know that he knows all the Pokemon on the team, right? There's no shocks left. He's seen them all. They've been revealed. So knowing that Pokemon, you know, if you know that it's the Dragapult, okay, well, I can use a fairy move, something like the Dazzling Gleam, or, or I can throw moves that are going to cause problems in that direction. So really being able to, to think a little bit more about his game plan once he puts his opponent on the back foot and I, I think this Rotom's done that this Rotom's been picking up knockouts and messing around with the board state so much uh, that it's in a good position I mean that said there's still rain up which is going to make surging strikes hurt a little bit more yeah let's see how much damage it does of course with those guaranteed critical hits going into the opposing Togekiss um, oh, this looks like it's going to be a little bit close. Togekiss, I believe, might be able to survive on this. Just does over 50% on the second one. Third one coming out, and Togekiss is able to hang on. And I think it's critical here, Togekiss being able to redirect any damage away from this Rotom. It's a low HP, but it is now able to go for its um, final max move. Going to target down into the Urshifu. Little bit, you know, of a, a lot of damage on a 1 HP Pokemon, but just in case there was going to be a switch in there and just it picks up the guaranteed KO. You don't have to worry about that Urshifu anymore, dealing out that really big damage. And I like the switch by Centennial as well, bringing in the Dragapult. Yes, it got in for free, but he's now able to reset the terrain and have that Rillaboom being an offensive threat once again. And he's got his ally switch and Dragapult on the field. Let the mind games commence again, Adam. The, the ally switch doesn't, I don't think, helps him too much here. It could swing it in the next couple turns, but I think more importantly, I mean, the, the Togekiss is just keeping things safe for a little bit, right? And that's, that's really key. Um, of course, if the Togekiss does decide to mix it up and, and try get some attacks in itself, maybe try and get a knockout on the Dragapult, uh, things could be different. Uh, the Protect here, something we don't see on every Togekiss, and it can really mess with people. Of course, Santino knows about it from the team sheet, uh, but if he's kind of completely gone for it, uh, this could really slow him down and maybe trying to swing this game back in his favor. That said, uh, Spread Move and Breaking Swipe certainly helps out. Yeah, lowering Rotom's attack, but Rotom doesn't mind that too much. He goes for the Hydra Pump, does actually manage to connect and goes down into that Rillaboom slot. Even though it's not very effective, still these a decent chunk of damage, about a third of damage, thanks to the boost from the rain as well. Um, it was a nice protector by the Togekiss. You know, you, you might have suspected the Grassy Glide could go maybe into the Rotom, just try and remove it from the field. Um, but actually, the Togekiss is the one that applies probably the biggest threat to that opposing Rillaboom. 
most certainly. And, and that's something that needs to be dealt with if Santino is going to kind of pull this one back. Uh, this is the first like portion of the game we've played at length with no Dynamax on the field from either trainer. So uh, interesting to see how this one kind of plays out. Of course, that Dragapult uh, should be able to pick up that Rotom at any point with the Breaking Swipe. Uh, and that being a spread move makes things kind of easy, right? To to be able to, to go and tidy this one up. So I'll be curious to see uh, what the last Pokemon is from Yuri. Uh, that's really going to decide this match. If it's something that can answer this Rillaboom, uh, is in a good position. Amoongus is certainly a lot slower uh, than some of the other options uh, and really limited against Rillaboom. The Spore isn't going to be able to stop Rillaboom for the duration of the game. Yeah, Amoongus is not the offensive powerhouse that you really need if you're Yuri, but you know, if it, something like Sludge Bomb can still do some decent damage to that opposing Rillaboom. Um, but like you mentioned, Breaking Swipe, being able to pick up a KO against that Rotom very easily means it'll soon be a uh, Amoongus versus Santino battle going on here. Breaking Swipe going to connect uh, and we'll be able to pick up the KO on that Rotom. So Amoongus having its attack drop again, not going to worry about that too much. But Amoongus versus a Dragapult and a Rillaboom, the problems just get Ooh. tougher and tougher for this Pokemon. Sludge Bomb does come out but doesn't manage to pick up the KO. No, that's a really good kind of change of pace from Amoongus. We usually see it trying to slow things down with a Spore, um, but it has Sludge Bomb, uh, and that's able to do huge amounts of damage to Rillaboom. Uh, of course, this Breaking Swipe is going to be uh, very, very slow at dealing with uh, this Amoongus, uh, but it's certainly something, right? It's certainly a way out. Uh, Rillaboom's just going to keep on grassy gliding. That's a good amount of damage overall uh, with the critical hit. Um, but this game, I mean, Amoongus may be able to swing it back in its favor. It's just going to be really slow. Uh, that said, the breaking swipe's starting to add up here. Uh, the, that damage is, is ticking along kind of extensively. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the Rillaboom here with that choice band really putting in the work with that offensive pressure. And, you know, you've got the grassy terrain its side as well. It's going to be able to get the boost from that. Um, and Amoongus, yes, it can regain a little bit of HP here, but it doesn't have the main HP recovery that it likes to have with that regenerator ability, being able to switch out and come back in a little bit healthier than before. Um, so it is really stuck here facing down against this Pokemon. Rillaboom going to go for that grassy glide once again. Still doesn't do enough to be able to pick up the KO as Dragapult takes a little bit of a rest, leaving Amoongus free to go for that Sludge Bomb, able to connect onto that Rillaboom and be able to pick up the KO. So actually, as you mentioned here, Adam, if this Dragapult can stay asleep and Amoongus can regain a little bit of HP, maybe survive some of those breaking swipes, and then keep putting it back to sleep when it wakes up. This could be an opportune moment for this Amoongus. It certainly could. I mean, its recovery is now gone as the grassy terrain finally expires from this one. But this Amoongus is, is bringing this game a whole lot closer than many people may have thought. So uh, it's going to be a, a real close one with some not big hits going down. Those sludge bombs uh, are going to be doing pretty small amounts of damage to the Dragapult. And of course, while it's asleep, it can't get poisoned, which is kind of an interesting one. Um, you've got to be careful if you sludge bomb because then you can't sleep it next turn. Uh, but it's going to take a number of sludge bombs. It looks like it may be five, uh, even six, uh, to, to get it there with the Dragapult. So the Dragapult just needs to weave in a couple of breaking swipes. Uh, of course, the breaking swipe now adding up a little bit more as it's not spread out. And yeah, the Amoongus, if he hasn't spored here, is done for. He has called it, though. Uh, Yuri making sure that the Dragapult stays asleep, uh, really bringing this game down to the wire. Yeah, I mean, great going for the Spore there, but I just worry about the HP of that Amoongus. It doesn't have any recovery, and even if Dragapult is able to sleep for all the maximum turns, those Sludge Bombs are really not putting in the work. He needs to be able to get a few cheeky critical hits there. You know, that's one. Maybe with two more turns, you're going to be able to whittle it down, but I think it would only be into the red bar of that HP. Um, so it just wouldn't be able to pick up that code. But Dragapult's still sleeping. Go for another Sludge Bomb. Do we get a critical hit? No. So I think there's only one more potentially there for... Um, or two, two more, two more Sludge Bomb potentials. It needed. Now, ah, there it is. Dragapult wakes up and, and the Breaking Swipe connects. It was it was a long road for Amoongus to, to try and get it there. But in the end, a game that, I mean, game one, four turns. So, so close uh, 